In the dark shadows, in the white cold, fearlessly we search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read the ancient tomes. The order of the Abracast. We are the brave and the bold. The Abracast. Occult, history, conspiracy, and violence. Explicit content indicator. This means that I use adult language. I do not speak in a humorless, public radio hushed monotone. I am excited and enthusiastic about the information that I present and the topics I discuss. You will hear ice rattle in my glass throughout the show. On the show, I joke about bodily functions, sex acts, religion, and politics. The topics may seem random or scattered through the back catalog. A list of show topics in chronological order is provided on the featured topic link at abercast.com. If any of these issues might trigger you, this might not be the podcast for you. And I wish you good luck finding a show more to your liking. It's that time again. The music is low. The party is over. The fire is dying down, and all the ordinary people passed out long ago. Now we are the only ones left. Hey, everybody, it's John. Hey, so we got done finally with the the Spake Zarathustra Wednesday Book Club, and uh, I was considering not replacing it, um, but uh, I kind of like doing it. So I thought we would stick with philosophy. And um, getting into a new kind of school of philosophy, and I thought uh, we should do something on uh, Stoicism, because it's uh, linked pretty heavily with Gnosticism. Um, uh, It's not spiritual at all, uh, but it's about, it seems to be about a lot about like material uh, verse, whatever we'll, we'll get into it. So, uh, I went and I found it's not, this is not going to be nearly as long as Zarathustra was. Um, uh, so I went and I found, uh, this, they call it the handbook. It was written by this guy, Epictetus. Uh, it's real title is the Enchiridion. Um, so that's going to be the featured book for this, uh, little series of, um, the book club. So, uh, Let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Reminder that January 27th through the 30th, uh, I'm doing a 72 hour fast. And um, I wanted to know if anyone wanted to join me so we can uh, be miserable together. <laughs> um, so uh, if you are interested, uh, shoot me um, an email at towers113 at gmail.com. Um, that's done. This is done. And oh, okay. So here, uh, summon your vessel of the art and raise it to the air. I want to thank all of my uh, Patreon and subscribe star supporters. Thank you guys. And um, let's see, which is going to be a good one. Hmm. Uh, so uh, here's the toast. Here's to the storks that bring good babies. The crows that bring bad babies. And the swallows that bring no babies. Here, here. So here we go. And the Enchiridion by uh, Epictetus. Um, unlike the Zarathustra series, where we did the straight episodes of the of the Speak Zarathustra, and then we did the lessons. As a separate thing, we're not going to do that this time. Uh, this time we are going to be tackling the lessons as they occur. 
I actually, I was like, I'm always too busy to do stuff. <laughs> like I'm like a workaholic or something. So I'm like, you know, I wish I really had time to re-edit the Zarathustra episodes and put the lessons in with each chapter. That's really how I should have done it to begin with. Anyhow, I learned my lesson. I learned, uh, and so I am fixing it. So there's some featured, uh, summary by this guy, uh, Sean Fulmer. Um, he's, uh, it, I found it on a website called Alcation, and there's also additional summary and analysis by our old friends, grade saver. Uh, so I'll let you know when we're off the book and when we're onto those. And then if you guys want to expand, you can go and find them on a uh, line at Alcation or grade saver. I feel like I'm babbling, but I mean, we're doing pretty good on time so far. Quick note about the way this book is structured. It seems like there's just uh, like 52, I think, uh, essays or like short chapters. And this guy, he brings the, um, he's, he's pretty succinct. I can see why people call this the handbook or the manual. Uh, one. And this is great advice. I mean, right off the bat, this first uh, sentence, um, some things are in our control and others, not things in our control are opinion, pursuit, desire, aversion, and in a word, whatever are our own actions, things not in our control are body, property, reputation, command, and in one word, whatever are not your own actions. So look, I mean, we got a pretty big one right off the bat. The things in our control are by nature free and unrestrained, unhindered. And those uh, not in our control are weak and slavish, restrained and belonging to others. Remember then that if you suppose that things which are slavish by nature are also free, and that what belongs to others is your own, then you will be hindered. You will lament when you are disturbed, and you will find fault both with gods and men. But if you suppose that only to be your own, which is your own, and what belongs to others such as it really is, then no one will ever compel you to restrain you. Further, you will find fault with no one, or accuse no one. You will do nothing against your will. No one will hurt you. You will have no enemies and you not be harmed. Aiming therefore at such great things, remember that you must not allow yourself to be carried even with a slight tendency towards the attainment of lesser things. Instead, you entirely quit some things and for the present postpone the rest. But if you would both have these great things along with power and riches, then you will not gain even the latter because you aim at the former too, but you will absolutely fail of the former, which alone happiness and freedom are achieved. Work, therefore, to be able to say to every harsh appearance, you are but an appearance and not absolutely the thing you appear to be. And then examine it by those rules which you have and first and cheaply by this, whether it concerns the things which are in our own control, those which are not. And if it concerns anything not in our control, be prepared to say that it is nothing to you. Why worry about what is beyond your power to control? Indeed, whatever happens, even if properly guarded against, still happens. To worry is folly. Worry not and go on with your life. This is a pretty great piece of advice. And this, uh, I use this as an example when this came up on, um, the conversations episode, um, when my wife first moved in, uh, something crazy happened and a glass of wine spilled on the, on the carpet. And everybody was just looking at me expecting to like flip the fuck out. And I, um, I was just like, Hey, don't worry about it. You know, it's like, 
I can't control the carpet. <laughs> I can't here. This is a better way to look at it. I can't control time. You know, I can't take uh, Dr. Strange time stone and rewind the spill and then find some way to stop it from happening. Like I literally can't do that. Uh, so why, why take the stress, uh, of worrying about it is clean it up as best as you can and continue on with your evening. I do a lot of stuff in my life to avoid stress. My blood, I probably have said this before, like my blood pressure is through the roof and I'm like stress. I stress out about almost everything. So I try to, you know, like I'm stressing out about, I'm doing it. I'm doing exactly, I'm stressing out about things I can't really control. Right. Like, um, you know, <laughs> you know, um, uh, I'm not going to say it Any, anyhow. So this is interesting and a way in a way this is also about our Thelema episodes right we have to will ourselves not to worry about stuff or to stress out about things you have to kind of put your your mind in check now I did tie a lot of the Nietzsche stuff to Thelema only because Crowley said that Nietzsche was a prophet of the coming of the Thelema or something. So I am not saying that stoicism is about Thelema or, you know, pre uh, was a, pro a prophesized, um, prophesized the coming of Thelema. But what I'm, I'm pulling at that thread of the, you have to kind of be mindful and will yourself not to f be stressed out or worry about these things that you can't control. So there is a discipline to it. And uh, one of the um, little analyses that I found is the uh, discipline and athleticism in um, the hand, the hand, this handbook here. Uh, the stoic life depends on pr the practice of discipline, just as the athlete prepares for competition by training and practice. So also... Epictetus says that a Stoic should train and practice by learning which impulses to deny and by training oneself to do what is ethical and advantageous. He says that uh, a person's mind can become disciplined. He uses the body's athletic ability as a symbol for this discipline, saying that men the mental discipline is very similar to a physical skill. So I thought that was super interesting. You know, that's all, you know, that's all Lieber three. Uh, the, the symbol that Crowley uses is, uh, three beasts driven by one whip. And in that story, the whip is the will. Yeah, this is fun, huh? Two. Remember the following desire promises the attainment of that of which you are desirous and the aversion promises the avoiding that to which you are averse. However, he who f fails to obtain the object of the desire is disappointed and he who incurs the object of his uh, aversion uh, wretched. If then you confine your aversion to those objects which are uh, only contrary to the natural use of your uh, faculties, which you have in your own control, you will never incur anything to which you are averse. But if you are averse to sickness or death or poverty, you will be wretched. Remove aversion then from all things that are not in our control the transfer it to the things contrary to the nature of which is in our control but for the present totally suppress desire for if you desire any of the things which are not in your own control you must necessarily be disappointed and of those which are and which it would be laudable to des to desire nothing is yet in your possession Use only the appropriate action of pursuit and avoidance. If even these lightly and with gentleness and reservation. So, uh, 
Mm. One of the analysis I found restrain about restraining desire, whether it be a desire to attain something or to avoid something, desire only that which is truly attainable and avoid only that which is truly avoidable. To desire to avoid death or taxes, for instance, is a fool's game for they are inevitable. <laughs> when I stopped myself from divulging a little bit too much information, I was actually thinking about, <laughs> I was actually going to say like, um, uh, because I don't want to go to jail anyhow. So here, you know, basically what this, uh, Epictetus is telling me is like, Hey, don't worry about <laughs> Uh, it wasn't a criminal activity. I wasn't trying to swindle anybody or uh, get anybody in trouble. I certainly wasn't trying to get myself in trouble. Anyhow, enough with my fucking problems. Uh, three. <laughs> with regard to whatever objects give you delight are useful or are deeply loved, remember to tell yourself of what general nature they are beginning from the most insignificant things. If for example, you are fond of a specific ceramic cup, remind yourself that it is only ceramic cups in general of which you are fond. If it breaks, then you will not be disturbed. If you kiss your child or your wife, uh, say that you only kiss things which are human and thus you will not be disturbed if either one of them dies. So this is the kind of where I was with the carpet thing, right? Like, um, or I mean, to put a finer point on it, a few, uh, shit, I guess it was like maybe a month or two ago. Um, my vessel of the art broke and I was like, ah, fuck. The first vessel of the art that was ever created. The it's one of the Patreon and subscribe star um tier rewards is you get this fucking sweet ass mason jar with the logo the Abercast logo on it. Anyhow, the first one ever busted. That was my personal one. And I was like, ah, shit. And I started to feel like shitty about it. And then I I look across the room and in the <laughs> in the um the fulfillment center of stigmata studios over here. Uh, there was, you know, a half a dozen of them sitting there, <laughs> you know, and I was just like, well, I guess I get to get in a new cup. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, relationships and boundaries. There's a motif between relationships and boundaries. The stoic should understand the boundaries that lie between a person's willpower and the various types of external reality. You know, I'm powerless against gravity. If there is such a thing, no, I'm just kidding. This, this is done in an attempt to fix one's desire for control by understanding the ethical use of power. One respect boundaries, which are not theirs to cross. A man should not try to cr try to manipulate other people, God or one's self. The stoic understands what it is properly his to control and what it isn't. And they masterfully manage only their own responsibilities. That's another thing that comes up again and again when we're talking about you know, I know this isn't a book about magic, but we're talking about, uh, magic is it's always circles around back to the, to this responsibility thing. And I always find it interesting that I stumble upon it in the weirdest of places, not saying that a philosophical handbook or manual isn't a proper place to talk about responsibilities. It is. Um, but this, this idea about, you know, using someone's willpower, uh, against various types of external reality. So maybe I'll do this a lot. This isn't like taking the reality stone. Um, who had the fucking reality stone from the collector. It's not about taking the reality stone from the collector and negating gravity. So my vessel of the art wouldn't break. It's about the power that you have over your own sort of 
emotion, your own ability to to worry or to stress out, your expectation of having to deal with your favorite this thing that's pretty fucking all like awesome and it means something to you and it's directly tied into you know this ritual that you do with yourself three times you know a, a week it's something that's super personal and it's just gone it's just fucking atomized on the floor of the studio you know so you have that one moment where you're like motherfucker but then you just you look over and you're like, uh, hey, I got a whole I got some more of these things sitting right here, you know. And I guess that's kind of why we're talking about stoicism, because it is I mean, this is like this is a Gnostic sort of deal. Or if I were speaking about Gnosticism, this is one of the things that I would talk about. Right. I would be like. You know, <laughs> attachment, <laughs> attachment to material things is attachment to the material, you know, world is bad. It reminds me of fucking reminds me of Yoda in the good Star Wars movies. Uh, you know, we're just uh, crude matter. Luminous beings are we. You know, don't get tied to your to your fucking gla your fucking this fucking mason jar. All right, I'm moving on. Number 4. When you are going about any action, remind yourself what nature the action is. If you are going to bathe, picture to yourself the things which usually happen in the bath. Some people splash the water, some push, some use ab abusive language and others steal. You know, this is an ancient Greek thing. So I think they're probably talking about like a bath house, not like your tub at home. <laughs> but I mean, if you live in a crazy house, you know, you might suffer thieves and abusive languages in your bathtub. Thus, you will more safely go about this action and say to yourself, I will now go bathe and keep my own mind in a state of conformable to nature. And in the same manner with regard to every other action for thus, if any hindrance arises in bathing, you will have it ready to say. It was not only to bathe that I desired, but to keep my mind in a state of conformable to nature. And I will not keep it if I am bothered at things that happen. God dang. So... So the summary that I have here says, keep your wits about you in all manners and do not be put off kilter by the unexpected. See, that's not, <laughs> that's, I kind of look at it differently, right? I say that this is saying to expect things. It's like general Mattis says he was like, just keep, be calm and polite, but have a plan to kill every motherfucker in the room. See, like when things happen that are, not part of the pattern. You know what I mean? Like you might, that might be a reason to react, right? So I don't live in a ghetto. I don't live in a bad part of town. I live in a relatively peaceful and quiet neighborhood. And, um, even though I'm not neighborly with a lot of my neighbors, we don't have any problems. Uh, uh, a few days before new year's Eve, however, <laughs> Luckily I was passed out. Luckily I was hammered and I passed out. It was like four o'clock in the morning. My, my wife is a night owl. Uh, so she was up, uh, four o'clock in the morning. It, there was also an obnoxious fucking party, uh, next door. There was like these thugs. I can hear them in my house and, uh, a, a fucking fight happened and spilled out into the, fr the front yard. Fucking shots were fired. Like it was like crazy. So it, in the, in part four here, there nothing like that's ever happened to me. So I wouldn't have prepared myself for that, that action. Right. And also literally, this is something that I could have tried to control in a manner. Right. Uh, 
<laughs> a guy who was passed out drunk wakes up because gunshots were fired on the street in front of his house. Uh, there's a pretty big possibility that, um, you know, uh, I could have interjected myself in that situation with my AR 15 and I'm not the kind of guy that squeezes off six shots and doesn't hit a target. You know what, you know what I'm saying? Like my whole life could have been fucking different <laughs> from this, from this perspective, this point on. So I don't think it's about the unexpected. I think it's about situational awareness. Hmm. I could be wrong though. What do I, I'm not a stoicist. That's not what my peach. That's not what my doctorate is in five men are disturbed, not by things, but by principles and notions, which they form concerning things. Death, for instance, is not terrible else. It would have appeared so to Socrates, but the terror consists in our notion of death, that it is terrible. When, therefore, we are hindered or disturbed or grieved, let us never attribute it to others, but to ourselves. Personal responsibility. Again, it is uh, to our own principles and un in, uh, uninstructed person will lay the fault of his own bad condition upon others. We all know people like this. It's your fault. It's your fault. Your, your fault. When what we really need to do is... Look in the mirror and point that finger at you. At you, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. He, 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 he. Uh, someone just starting instruction will lay the fault on himself, and some who, uh, some who is perfectly instructed, will place blame neither on others nor himself. Like, hey, this is just what fucking happens. I remember losing money when I was a kid. I had like a fucking like $20 bill or something and something happened. It got stolen or got lost or whatever. And I looked all over the house for, it. I couldn't find it. So when I told my old man, he freaked the fuck out and he was like, how do you do this? How do you just lose $20? And, um, I was just like, well, it's fucking lost. Like what's freaking out about it going to do? Bam. Stoic age 12 school in the old man. Uh, the analysis that, uh, that I found says, realize that your perspective is stronger than any external happenstance upon your own person. Even death when approaching you is only frightful. If you allow it to be so you accept the things as they come and do not direct your criticism on to others. I found another bit here about accepting life like Buddhism sto stoicism has at its center, the belief that life is essentially suffering. Life is pain. Birth is pain. Life is pain. Death is pain. That's also something that the Gnostics might say. Huh. By resisting this false answer of desire, and the pursuit of happiness, one accepts life for the way it is. This means that desire is a kind of dramatic irony. As long as one pursues their desires, they are locked into false narratives that obscure their vision from the wonder and surrender uh, that would bring peace. This is a shared tenement between Epictetus's so Stoicism and Buddhism. Hey guys, I'm Abby and I'm Shauna and we're the host of a podcast called Anxious and Afraid. Do you love deep dives into true crime, the paranormal, strange history, conspiracies? Well, so do we. And each week we take turns surprising each other with whatever anxiety inducing subject we are obsessed with that week. Tune in each week to hear Shauna mispronounce words. Um, the guys on the lookout apparently asked for binoculars. Did I say that right? So the photos showed him and his colleague entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> and listen in as Abby constantly asks too many questions. I was about to ask you a lot of questions. And I'm glad that you interrupted me. Continue. <laughs> I would have told you to shut up. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Stop I'm trying quizzing to me. Do. Okay, okay, you know, I did enough research. Let me just tell the damn story. Jesus. Continue. 
Episodes drop every Tuesday, available wherever you get your podcasts. And you can also find us at our website, anxiousandafraid.com. We're always looking for new friends, so don't forget to rate and subscribe. So this month on the Fulgar Correspondentia, just a fancy word for the mailing list, (laughs) um... Since we're heading into the fourth quarter of our Genesis series, there's a little uh, brief Genesis timeline, according to me, um, that's that's up there. Uh, also, since we are going to be getting into Jacob and Esau, I finally sat down and started to work on a map of the wrong son, the wrong son, the wrong blessing idea that we've been running into. Uh, pretty much this whole Genesis thing um, sat down and it worked out some pretty cool details. So I think it's pretty cool. Also, as always, you can look at my latest up to date uh, version of the tarot cards that I'm designing. All that if you sign, if you just sign into the mailing list, all that bonus stuff. But uh, the fellow craft episode on the Patreon and subscribe star this month, um, we're starting to look at and dissect the work of Milton William Cooper in uh, episode entitled the UFO conspiracy part one. Learn more at abracast.com. Get bonus content by signing up for the mailing list. Get all that plus many exclusive episodes by supporting the show at patreon.com or subscribestar.com. Number six. And this is going to touch on something that's been popping up too, also on the show. Um, about, well, this isn't really about humbleness, but humbleness is coming up on the show. But this is specifically about. Okay, I'm just going to read it. Don't be prideful with any excellence that is not your own. If a horse should be prideful and say, Hey, I'm fucking handsome. It would be supportable. But when you are prideful and say, I have a handsome horse, uh, know that you are proud of what is, in fact, only the good of the horse. What then is your own? Only your reaction to the appearance of things. Thus, when you behave conformably to nature, in reaction to how things appear, you will be proud with reason for you will take pride in some good of your own. Uh, 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 it says, do not, this is not the book. This is the analysis or the summary. Do not accept compliments or accolades that you are not worthy of. If a person compliments the beauty of your dog, the true compliment goes to your dog or the parents of your dog for passing along the fine genes. You may have washed and brushed your dog, but truly you did not bestow the gift of beauty on him. So do not become excited when any praise not due to you truly. Uh, Number seven, consider when on a voyage, your ship is anchored. If you go ashore to get water, you may along the way, amuse yourself with picking up a shellfish or an onion. I don't know why there's an onion hanging out on the beach. However, your thoughts and uh, continual attention ought to be bent towards the ship waiting for the captain to call you aboard. You must then immediately leave all of these things. Otherwise you will be thrown into the ship bound neck and feet like a sheep. So (laughs) it is with life. If instead of an onion or a shellfish, you are given a wife or a child that is fine. But if the captain calls you, you must run to the ship 
leaving them and regarding none of them. But if you are old, never go that far from the ship, lest when you are called, you should be unable to come in time. So Great Saver says, enjoy your life on a daily basis, but never forget the greater importance of responsibility. Travel through life as though you were the captain of this ship. There's a Cypress Hill song that starts out like that. If uh, so, and be attentive for not only your safety, but that of your ship, but also of your crew whose place their lives in safety uh, in your hands. Likewise, as you grow older, lessen your adventurous risks and be content with the good, slow life of the elderly. I am not sure I agree with that, but I will drink to it. Age is the, age is the, uh, it's only a number, right? Forty mm. is the new 20. <laughs> um, so we're talking about responsibility again. And that uh, allocation website has this to say about the mechanism of responsibility. In this book, we see an attempt to categorize rules, which if followed will lead to uh, mental clarity, balance, and health. The, this description of mental health has moral responsibilities at it, its center. The mechanism of personal responsibilities is as follows. Each person, uh, each personal choice has consequences. And by ignoring these consequences or by pretending the consequences are different than they actually are, a person makes their mental health fractured by lying to themselves. This means that mental health begins for Epictetus with accepting the consequences of one's own actions. It's all, it's all going to be about responsibility guys. Okay. Number eight, this is short and short. And I don't know, to the point, <laughs> don't demand that things happen as you wish, wish that they happen as they do happen and you will go on well, uh, things, great saver says things, uh, accept things as they happen for you cannot control them once they have occurred to disturb your mind with the rumination upon the past. You will harm yourself here and now, and maybe in the future. And you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of like when you get in an argument with somebody and then you like storm out of the room and you're like, fuck, I wish I would have said this. <laughs> I wish I would have said this. And then you walk back in, you set up the same situation. Um, so you can have the argument over again and then you could fucking unleash your fire that you had thought of afterwards. And you go, uh, the jerk store called. They're looking for more of you. Number nine, sickness is a hindrance to the body, but not only your ability to choose unless is your choice. Lameness is a hindrance to the leg, but not your ability to choose. Say this to yourself with regard to everything that happens, then you will see such obstacles as hindrance to something else, but not to yourself. Great Saver says, the body is not the mind. Should you be lame of the body, do not dwell on it. The mind uh, is a paradise unto itself that the body should not be allowed to affect. You must stay strong of will. Jesus, man, that's powerful, right? Oh, God dang it. Years ago. I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should tell the story years ago, my stepbrother got blown up in Iraq as Bradley rolled right over an IED and, uh, they put him in a medical coma for a while until they could get him to Germany and they were looking at his legs. He had like I don't know, inches of just bones just missing out of his fucking like his knees and his legs and shit. And, um, they were like, we're going to proceed to amputate and he was like no no you're not you're gonna figure out how to fix this shit <laughs> and um 
uh, if it would have been me, I probably would have been like, yes, fine. Take, take them. Give me those fucking robot legs. I want, I want some of those. But he uh, stuck by his guns and he went through all the pain and all the suffering. Like they put these like ratchet things into his bones and then every day he had to like tighten them three times to like uh, get the bones to grow together and stuff. And he had just, like a ass look like he can't even get like MRI and stuff because he's still got like fucking like particles of shrapnel and shit in there. But like tough decisions, dude. I don't even know how that ties into this. <laughs> All right, we're going to do one more. Ten. With every accident, ask yourself what abilities you have for making a proper use of it. If you see an attractive person, you will find that self-restraint is the ability you have against your own desire. If you are in pain, you will find fortitude. If you hear unpleasant language, you will find patience. Uh, and thus habituated, the appearance of all things will not hurry you along your way with them. Great Saver says, for every life impediment, there is a solution. I imagine. Sometimes the solution may not be material, but psychic. Not like woo-woo fortune teller psychic. They're talking about the psychology of it. And this is fine. The mind controls how we view the world. And attitude is everything. All right, guys. I'm John. This has been the Abercast. Hey, don't forget the UFO Conspiracies Part 1. Um, on Patreon and subscribe star. It's fun. It's a good time and it's going to lead to something even funner next month. Um, and uh, don't forget the wrong, the wrong son, the wrong blessing infographic for the full gore correspondentia slash the mailing list un unslash and also the brief timeline of Genesis. According to me, don't forget all that stuff and everything Hill is about to, Hill is about to tell you. Thank you for listening to this episode. Send an email or visit us on social media to let us know what you think about this topic. And please remember to leave a five-star rate and review. Hey, did you learn something? Did you laugh? Supporting me is a way for you to be a part of the Abercast and ensure its growth and sustainability. It also means I can create a normal schedule for shows and bonus shows, as well as the exclusive fellow craft episodes. By supporting the show, you are not only a listener, but you are a part of the show. You supporting the show gives me a way to offer fun rewards as a thank you for showing your appreciation and support for our projects. Do you have an idea for a reward that you don't see? Let me know. My supporters are my partners. I currently pay for you to listen to the Abercast. Not only do I pay the hosting bills out of my own pocket, I volunteer my time and uh, talent to each and every episode of the Abercast. The price of books, the time and resources of reading and researching, the massive amounts of gin and tonic needed, the equipment it takes to record the shows, the time and resources it takes to create the bonus material, and the cost to maintain the internet presence. Is it worth your support? I don't know. I'm proud of the Abercast, and I feel like I'm improving all the time. In addition uh, to creating the show that you dig, and that you are excited about, I also have a full-time commitment and other obligations. So why financial support? All of the supporters help me focus my time in 
on the quality and development of the podcast. And what if you can't afford, you know, $1 or $3 or $10 or whatever a month? Believe me, I get that. There are many degrees of support, but if you can't support the show financially, please consider leaving a five-star rate and review on your preferred podcast app. And don't forget that you could sign into the mailing list and still unlock a lot of bonus content. Thank you. I cannot put into words how much it means to me that you listen to the show each time I post a new episode. Your feedback, support, and love of the stories that we talk about here is what keeps me going. 